guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, hi, my name is Cassie. You guys already know what's happening. You saw the title. You see all these beautiful books I have beside me. I am doing my first reading wrap-up video. I'm so excited to do this video. Like, genuinely, I have been wanting to do this video for like six plus months, but for some reason, I kept like putting it off. I kept saying to myself that I wasn't qualified enough. I don't even know what that means. I was just overthinking it a lot. But at this point, like my recommended page on YouTube is, I swear, like just booktubers. I love it so much. So I decided I finally was gonna make a book video of my own. Today I'm going to talk about and review all of the books that I've read since I got back into reading, which I think was like six months ago. I've only read like 15 books, so I'm not a super fast reader, but I still think that's enough to make a video about. So that's what I'm doing today. I just know already that this video is gonna be a long one, so grab a drink grab some snacks and uh, we're just gonna chat about some books and I'm really excited before we get into my individual thoughts on each book I want to quickly go through my rating system okay so I explained this in the video but I literally spent like five minutes explaining something that could have been explained in 10 seconds my rating system on how I rate books they all start out at 5 out of 10 and then they can have like added points to them they could also subtract points so my ratings kind of have like some thought put into it I don't know anyways Back to the video. Let's get started with the actual books. Okay, so this was the first book I read in a long, long time that wasn't for school or anything around like July. It's called We Were Liars. This book is all about the Sinclairs, which is a really, really rich family, and they all spend their summers together on an island. So like, they're really rich. And Katie, the main character, is of course a part of this family. And one summer she has like a head injury, which makes it so she can't remember events from a certain summer. I think it's summer 15. Through this book, it kind of takes you through each of the summers leading up to summer 15. So it's kind of like a mystery and there's a big plot twist at the end. The plot twist did make me cry. It was kind of out of nowhere. Now looking back, like the plot twist was definitely out of left field. I think that's why it made me cry because I usually cry when I'm shocked or surprised and I was definitely that. There is like a little bit of like childhood friends to romance tropes thrown in there. It's definitely not a big part of the plot, but it is in there and I think it's super cute. What I love about this book is how like summer vibes it is like they're full-on just living their lives in the summer on an island So yeah, you should read it this summer 8 out of 10 the next books I read is a part of a series a trilogy and it is the hunger games These are iconic. These are classic if you haven't heard of the books. Maybe you've heard of the movies I'm only gonna talk about the first book because if I talk about the second or the third book I think I'm gonna kind of spoil the first book and I don't want to do that The hunger games is a dystopia book This is a world where there are 12 districts and a capital the capital kind of rules over the district It's very rich and lavish in the capital and then the districts kind of have nothing they're living in poverty each year in the districts there's one boy and one girl from each district from the ages 12 to 18 that have to participate in what's called the hunger games which is basically where these little kids go into an arena and fight to the death on live television for everybody to see. It's kind of gruesome. I mean, not the book's not gruesome, but the idea is very gruesome. The main character ends up getting chosen to compete in the games. Her name is Katniss. The boy that is competing with her or against her, depending on how you look at it, is Peta. And there's kind of like a love triangle going on between like Peta, Katniss, and Gale. I am team Peta. Let me just put that out there. If you are team Gale, we need to chat. Anyone who says they're team Gale, I'm just assuming you haven't read the books and you're just basing off of Gail as Liam Hemsworth. Team PETA all the way. The series as a whole, I would give a 9 out of 10. I think it's very nostalgic and I'm just really invested in the characters. The first book is my favorite, then comes the second book, and then the third book... I didn't really like the third book. I did cry. Honestly, it was just a sad book because half the time my favorite character wasn't even in the book. And when he was, it was just sad. So great books nonetheless. There's also great movies if you want to watch that. The next book I read is definitely very hyped up on TikTok or was last year. And it is The Song of Achilles. I rate this book a 9 out of 10. It has like the trope childhood friends to lovers. It's so cute about Patrocle... Patroclus? Patro Patroclus? Patroclus. You know, we're just gonna call him Pat. So Pat and Achilles. Pat is like awkward and is an outcast. He was exiled from his kingdom to the kingdom where Achilles is the prince. And Achilles is very strong, very beautiful. He's basically a demigod. Not basically, he 
is a demigod, but go on. You have this really awkward person and this very like powerful person and create this inseparable bond. They're just so wholesome and cute and I love them so much. The first half of the book is definitely my favorite because it just kind of has more like wholesome vibes and it's just very like warm and cozy. The ending is good, but like the second half of the book was not my favorite. It was just very long and a lot of war. But either way, the writing is absolutely stunning. I swear it's like poetry, it's beautiful literature. Okay, this next book was my first true 10 out of 10. It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I honestly think, forget about the hype, this book is amazing and beautiful. This book does have flaws, it's a little cheesy in some places, but I think it's a beautiful work of art. So I rated it a 10 out of 10. The tropes are like love triangle and then childhood lovers. This book is about the main character, Lily, meets this guy named Ryle. It's almost like instant attraction, but the thing is, is Ryle is not the relationship type of guy. He's a neurosurgeon, so he's kind of like a douchebag a little bit. But later on in the book, Lily and Ryle get closer, you know, but then someone from Lily's past, Lily's first love, Atlas, comes back into the picture. And this is also dual timeline. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but I am team Atlas. Anyone who is team Ryle needs therapy. That's all I'm gonna say. I think it's a beautiful book and I cried at the end, so. <laughs> Moving on, this book. This book. The Midnight Library. This book is basically self-help disguised as fiction. So, I mean, don't go into it thinking it's self-help, but it's beautiful how it made me rethink my entire life. I rated this book a 10 out of 10, and I'd do it again. I would rate it 11 out of 10 if that was an option, okay? Definitely look up trigger warnings for this book because I will admit, for me personally, it was a little heavy, especially the first two chapters. I took a two hour nap after reading the first two chapters because it was too heavy. Keep that in mind. After Nora dies, she goes to this library. Definitely can't say it better than the back of this book, so I'm just gonna read this. Between life and death, there is a library, she said, and within that library, the shelves go on forever. Each book provides a chance to try another life you could have lived, to see how things would be if you had made other choices. So like the book just said, um, Nora has a bunch of regrets in life, and each book is a life that would have happened if she didn't do what she regretted. For example, when she was younger, she was a really good swimmer, and she was on her way to being in the Olympics, and then she decided to quit. And one of the chapters, it talks about like what her life could have been like if she stayed in the Olympics. I really wish someone had showed this book to me sooner. This is one book that I'll recommend to everyone. Like obviously I won't recommend like romance books to some people, but I will recommend this book to absolutely everyone. Be Treed by Emily Henry. I feel like you guys are gonna hate me because this book was definitely very, very hyped up, but I rate this book a six out of 10. It's basically a book about two writers. The main character is January. She writes books about like happy romance books. There's another author named Augustus. They call him Gus in the book, which is, it's kind of just an ick for me. Maybe that's why I don't like this book. I don't know, I don't know. Anyways, Gus, also an author, and he writes more like moody literature, like kind of depressing, intense type of books. And January is experiencing writer's block. So she decides to go to her family's beach house in a cute little beach town, and she finds out her neighbor is Augustus. And now the thing is, the real catch, is that Augustus and January knew each other in college. They were college rivals, which is the trope, which I love this trope so much. It's academic rivals to lovers. I didn't really like this book as much as I thought I would. I think the reason why is because it's like just romance. For me, there kind of has to be another plot and like romance can't be the main plot or else I'm just not interested. I need there to be something else happening and there's just nothing else happening in this book. My big biggest flex with this book is I read this book over Thanksgiving break when my family was in Hawaii so I literally read Beach Read on the beach. So yeah, mic drop on that one. Moving on to the next set of books. The next book I read was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which was honestly another bit of a letdown, which I know you guys are gonna hate me for it. I still did really love this book. I rated it an eight out of 10. It's a great book. I think the problem is, is that it was so overhyped for me. I came in with way too high of expectations and they just didn't meet them. And I think that's partly my fault. The plot of this book is one of the biggest Hollywood icons and her name is Evelyn Hugo. She is ready to tell her life story. She's like in her 70s or something. She's gonna talk about her glamorous and scandalous life and the fact that she had seven husbands makes it 
kind of scandalous. We start reading about her life before fame and then in the 50s her rising to fame all the way to through the 80s. I found the plot really really interesting. I wasn't as attached to the characters as everyone else seemed to be so that's why this isn't rated higher. I didn't cry which is really surprising because a lot of people cried with this book so I don't really know why I didn't. All I will say is Harry is my favorite character. He is an angel. Moving on. Next Verity. Verity, guys. I feel like I could talk about this book for days on end. This book, 10 out of 10. It's a romantic thriller book. It's by Colleen Hoover. We love Colleen Hoover. This book is about Lowen, and she's a writer. She's kind of struggling financially, and she gets this job opportunity. Jeremy Crawford, husband of best-selling author Verity Crawford, has hired Lowen to complete the remaining books in a successful series. His injured keyword, wife is unable to finish. So when Lowen is looking in Verity's office, the famous writer, just trying to figure out her notes and stuff like that, she stumbles upon a manuscript. And this manuscript is basically an autobiography by Verity. Yeah, it's something. It's a uh, very incriminating. I just, I can't explain this book without giving any spoilers. And what's so weird about this book is usually like when I'm scared about a movie or I'm scared about a book, it's about something that could plausibly happen to me. Like say it's a book about like someone getting murdered in their house. Like theoretically, that could happen to me. But the thing is, is with this book, the plot, like this would never happen to me. Like I would never come up in this situation. And yet it's so terrifying. Colleen Hoover did such a good job because I literally went to sleep some nights like not being able to sleep because I was so scared, but for no reason because it had nothing to do with me. Like I was so scared as if I was Lowen, which was so crazy. So I don't want to spoil anything, but the ending is, absolutely bonkers like you think it's the end and then like the last few pages you're like oh shoot I have to rethink this whole book now so I am team manuscript if you're team letter or team manuscript don't spoil anything but tell me down below because or DM me because I definitely want to talk about this ending I have not stopped thinking about it and I read it like four months ago bright book 10 out of 10 moving on the next book I read was actually the first classic I read, like first like American literature, and it is Little Woman by Louisa May Alcott. First off, the writing in this book is absolutely beautiful, hence why it's a classic. Little Woman is a lot harder to read. It took me like two months to get through this book. I did not necessarily have an enjoyable time of reading the first part. The ending kind of made the whole thing worth it and how I feel about the book afterwards made all of the hard times reading it worth it. This book is about four sisters. The main character is Jo. What I really love about this book, like thinking back, which is another reason why I didn't like it in the moment, is how realistic and almost mundane this book is in some parts. Instead of it being about like crazy plot twists, it's about like family it's about heartbreak it's about like growing into who you are as a person when you get older although I will admit I was bored half to death the first part this book is just split into first parts like it literally says part one and part two part one I'd give like a four out of ten so boring part two 10 out of 10. And it's so refreshing to read love written in this way because I feel like with other romance books, the writing is cheaper, like it doesn't feel as authentic versus like this, it's just like poetry almost, if that makes sense. It's so beautiful. Anyways, nine out of 10. The book I read after that, which honestly could not be more different, it is The Love Hypothesis. The cover alone kind of makes me embarrassed, but let's talk about it. I rated this book a seven out of 10. This book is about a girl named Olive and she's trying to convince someone that she's over her ex. So when that someone is walking by, she impulsively decides to kiss the closest person to her and that person turns out to be a professor at the college she's attending. This trope is fake dating and grumpy versus sunshine. Adam decides to help her and they fake date. Um, we all know how the fake dating trope goes and ends up. That's kind of what happens. More of a guilty pleasure read. Honestly, like there's not a lot of substance to it and the plot is pretty much just romance, which is what I talked about earlier not really liking. The next book is All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover, which I just realized that all of the Colleen Hoover books that I've read so far have unapologetically been a 10 out of 10. I'm sure not all of her books are gonna be a 10 out of 10 for me, but this one definitely is, and it's All Your Perfects. This book was 
pretty much just about romance, but it was also shorter and there was a lot more substance to it. So I liked it. Okay, so this book is in dual timeline. So then in the past, Quinn meets this guy, Graham, when they find out that both of their significant others are cheating on them with each other and they both meet and they're like, well, this sucks. And then later they meet again and they fall in love and they basically, it's fate, you know? They have a beautiful love story and it's very beautiful to read. But you bounce back and forth between this beautiful, beautiful timeline of a beautiful love story back and forth between the now, which is seven years later. Their marriage is starting to fail. There's not any really, any fighting, but it just feels very cold and distant from each other. And the root of that problem, I don't think this is a spoiler. I don't know how Colleen Hoover was able to break my heart and put it back together within like 200, 300 pages. I cried in public while reading this book. So now I'm scared to get married, but great book nonetheless, 10 out of 10. Next book I read was my first YA murder mystery and it's called A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. So five years ago, this popular girl, Andy, is murdered by her boyfriend, Sal. And then after Sal murders Andy, he kills himself too. And five years later, Pip, a high school senior, is re-examining the case for her senior project. So, you know, she's doing some detective skills. There's a lot of like cool different ways of writing in here. Like it's not just paragraph form. There's also like interviews. There's emails that you have to read. It's almost like you are solving this case with Pip. Throughout this book, uh, Pip discovers secrets. And you know, the classic, her life is threatened because people are sending her notes being like, stop digging into this Pip, you know, classic stuff. I would rate this book an eight out of 10. I definitely couldn't stop reading. I was very intrigued. The only thing I didn't like about it, or one of the things was it felt really unrealistic. Like this girl is 16. She's full on confronting the murderers. She almost gets murdered herself, okay? She's 16. Why is she going to confront these people that have killed other people? Um, also, there's like some cute like friends to lover romance thrown in there. And it wasn't like overkill. It was just like little stuff here and there, which I really liked. Finally, the last book by Sally Rooney, Beautiful World, Where Are You? Apparently, Sally Rooney is like absolutely praised. Like people would die for Sally Rooney. You're either a Colleen Hoover stan or a Sally Rooney stan. And I, for one, am not a Sally Rooney stan, and I'll tell you why. I rate this book a 5 out of 10. That's so bad. And I, I didn't want to rate this book that bad, but like, basically, there's four characters. I'm not going to really talk about the plot because there really isn't a plot, and you guys know how I feel. Like, I really like plots, okay? And there's like next to no plot in this. There's four characters. They're all kind of mediocre, they're all kind of unlikable, and I'm all for an unlikable character, okay? But these were just annoying. I don't know how to explain it. Like, these people are in their 30s, and I could communicate better than them, and I'm like half their age. I'm only 16. Um, the only thing I did like about this book is how the writing kind of like romanticizes boring life, because like the book is very boring, but the writing style makes every single like interaction, whether someone's going to get coffee or if someone's like waking up, which I guess if you want to read the book very in depth, that could be very beautiful, but it also kind of just feels like an obstacle. Like sometimes you're just trying to figure out what's gonna happen next and she's giving you a full like two page description on what the beach looks like. Like girl, we don't care. You know, you know, I don't know. Oh, another thing that really annoyed me. This girl, I, it took me a while to get used to. I honestly did get used to it by the end of this book, but the dialogue, she doesn't use quotation marks and she doesn't even use like line breaks. Cause usually when you have dialogue in books, you'll have like a separate line for each like thing that a person says. But no, this girl full on has two pages with no paragraph breaks and you'll be having full dialogue and everything's just like scrunched together. Like you don't even have any line breaks. So sometimes it's really confusing to figure out who's talking because she doesn't use quotation marks. She'll just have like a period and then the next person will start talking. So you just have to like keep in mind that it's a conversation. I don't know how to explain it to you unless you've read the book, but it's just, it's kind of frustrating. I wouldn't necessarily recommend. Honestly, there was one paragraph that I really love that I think about all the time, and I will just put that on the screen. You, look at me, I'm saving you so much time. You don't even have to read the book. All you have to do is read this paragraph, and it's beautiful. 
But anyways, that is it for this video. You can see like all of my books just like hanging out on my bed. I know this is kind of a long video, so thank you so much for watching this far if you did. That means the world to me. Comment like a book emoji or something to let me know that you stayed till the end. If you enjoyed watching this video, subscribe, follow my Instagram. I give all of my book reviews and like my book reading updates on there just like for fun and just my normal life in general. So definitely go check that out. I love you guys to the moon and back and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys. Whoa.